Hi, I'm Alison Victor for Foodie TV. And we all know about the Marlboro regions in New Zealand, but today we're going to learn a little bit more about the sub-regions of Marlboro. And with me to help explain a little bit better is David Coleman from the Asia Wine Society. David, so where is Marlboro? Good question, Ali. Marlboro is actually on the northeast tip of the South Island. New Zealand's made up of two islands, right. and it's the northeast of the South Island. Okay, so, and there are plenty of sub-regions over there? What what is the well, difference? Well, Marlborough, yeah, that's a good question because Marlborough as a region has been branded incredibly well in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. As consumers, we've all enjoyed it, but what we haven't known is there's a lot of sub-regions within Marlborough that throw different flavours, and that's what we want to do today. Okay, so what wines, what regions are we going to be looking at? Well, we've got an exciting new region from Marlborough called the Kekarengu. Kekarengu. Yeah, it's the name of the coastline that runs down uh, Marlborough. It's wild country, very, very steep. Very, very uh, limestone structured soils, like mm -hmm. uh, it's nearly white when you look at the uh, soil structure, Beautiful. which gives a very, very different um, palate feel to the wine. And I think quite excitingly for Asia, a lower pH level. So what does that mean? What sort of taste are you going to get when you well, have a sip? Why don't we try it? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get some glasses. There you go. Thank you very much. So Kakarengu, it's on the coastline. This particular vineyard is only about two hills back in from the actual coast. As I said, limestone soils. Mm -hmm. Now limestone means the vines get a lower pH level. Now that's the acid in right. the actual wine, the, the sharpness you can get on the palate. For some reason, this gets a saltiness about this wine, nearly like drinking a, uh, a Chablis. It's more nearly Chardonnay than it is. Salty wine. Yeah, it's Very got a natural salt. Well, let's have a look. Okay. The nose to me is typically uh, Savion Blanc. I've got some very nice uh, gooseberry flavours there. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, you're right. Mm. It is quite salty. It really gets you on the back of the tongue. To me, this is just fresh oysters mm -hmm. in a glass. So perfect with seafood. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, crustaceans and so forth, fantastic with this wine. Oh, what's the next wine we're going to be talking about? Well, the Awateri. Now, I get a lot of clients who can't pronounce this. So, our Terry. Our Terry, yeah. Our Terry. So uh, I grew up watching uh, Coronation Street, and you've got to think about Terry from there. He's okay. Our Terry, you know. <laughs> That's so. a good tip to remember the name. <laughs> it's the second sub-region from the Marlborough region in New Zealand. Yep. Now, the Our Terry runs along the Our Terry River. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very, very ancient glacial river. So as the glacier retreated, it dropped all the, uh, the gravels down. Mm -hmm. The river has basically washed away most of the soil and you end up with a, quite a metallic style of uh, Savion Blanc. One of the first things you're going to notice on the nose with this is uh, a real childhood memory for me, which is stingy nettle and uh, green oh, peppers. Oh, I've been stung by nettles before. It's not pleasant. So. It's not pleasant. But, but it tastes it, good. But it does taste good. Let's have a go. Lots of uh, green pepper there, capsicum coming through. And I want you to remember that for a little later on. Green pepper, capsicum. Got it. It's, it's a lot softer than the first one we tried. What comes out in the Awateri is you get this very green fruit, but you mm -hmm. also get beautiful layers of tropical fruit coming behind that. Okay. So guava there, a little bit of passion fruit coming through. What would it be good with food-wise? Oh, this particular one, I think uh, sashimi, except no substitutes. Shiri. Yeah, Lovely. Yeah, you got beautiful acid in there, balanced out by that tropical fruit. Just a, a fantastic drinking wine. I've got uh, big hopes for the Awateri. Fantastic, Awateri. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, the next part of the sub-region we're going to look at is called the Southern Valleys. Okay. This is the original part of uh, the Marlborough region. The first vineyard was planted there by David Hurd in 1873 wow. on a vineyard called Arnsfield. Arns okay. Now, the Southern Valleys are very different because it's ancient soils back there. It's uh, not down on the flats at all mm -hmm. of the actual valley. It's up on the side of the hills where the ancient clay soils are. They're a little cooler, but they're also blended in again with the retreating uh, glacier. Drop the gravels down so we have a real blend of soils which gives absolute complexity to the, the uh, Savion Blanc. On the nose, a very different nose, isn't mm -hmm. it, compared Completely to the others? Different. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
has a palate feel. Mm. Completely <laughs> full, wow. It's got a lot going on, doesn't it? Definitely. And Again. What that, would you have this, uh, the Southern Valleys wine with? I think the range that the Southern Valleys goes with is even broader than the first two we've mm -hmm. actually had. As you can tell, there's a lot of flavours going on there. You know, it's a real explosion in the mouth. So you can go from your sashimis again, uh, great with your seafoods, but I could also step it up into some of the more cooked foods. So warm foods would go quite, right. quite well with this as, uh, as well. So are all bottles nowadays screw cap? What well, happened to corks? <laughs> <laughs> the poor old cork. Well, wine over the last 20 years has gone absolutely crazy worldwide, and it put a lot of pressure on the cork industry. So we ended up getting a lot of substandard cork coming into the, the industry, mm -hmm. and that resulted in a, about a third of all bottles having some sort of cork taint. What I really like about screw caps mm -hmm. is the fact that you get the wine exactly as the winemaker made it. I'm not saying it's good or bad, but you get it how the winemaker intended. So we've talked about the Kikarangu, the mm -hmm. Arateri, and the Southern Valleys, but we've got five bottles. So what are these two over here? Right, well, what I'm going to do is put a little test on you now. Uh-oh. So traditionally <laughs> from Marlborough, we've had uh, wines that have been blended right across the valleys. Okay. Okay. And this one here, the De Villiers, has done particularly well on the international stage. And I'm going to test you to see if you can pick which valley is predominantly in this wine. Let me clear <laughs> up my taste buds a little bit. Okay. <laughs> so it's a blend of all these three? Yep. It's a blend of all okay. these three. So give Ready? the glass a good swirl like this, yep. which gives the coats the side of the glass and allows as much aroma to escape as possible. Yeah. You, now, if you need a bit more practice. If you can't do it like that, you don't just put it on the table and you can do it quite successfully ah, like that. Yep. Okay. So you just good so, tip there. so you don't wear it on your shirt. Now, that's going to allow you to get as much flavour up into your nose as you possibly can. Mm. Mm, what did I talk mm, about earlier? Mm -hmm, oh. mm -hmm. Stingy nettle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. Okay, I'm going to have a taste. I sense a bit more of the awateri. Stingy nettles, the capsicum. Got a lot of capsicum yes. coming through, yeah. Absolutely, 65% Awateri fruit in this. Yes. Well done. <laughs> Top of the marks Not for you. Not bad. <laughs> exactly. Now, I'm going to show you something that's quite new to Marlborough as a style. Okay. There's been a few producers doing it for a little while. Um, Babbage has been making one since about 1996. Arntsfield, though, which is a vineyard for, uh, that was started in 1873, yep. has really sort of pioneered this. So, Ali, this one I'm very, very excited to show you about. I think this is a great development for Marlborough. Okay. It's harking back to the good old days of how wine used to be made in a barrel. So barrel fermentation. This is very exciting because what we get is a lot more complexity in the actual wine and that is brought about by the fact it's aged in French oak barrels. Does that, so it's really special. A lot of effort's gone into it. Does that make it more expensive than the rest we've tried? Absolutely. This is a 2007 straight away. It takes about 18 months to actually make this wine. So it, uh, it naturally is more expensive. And the oak barrels themselves, they're about $1,500 a barrel. So you've just got a rise in costs everywhere you go. But why I'm so excited about this is because it's a real departure from the traditional Marlborough style of Savion Blanc. Mm -hmm. And so much so that it's just gone and won some very major awards at the international wine shows. We're very yes. excited about it. So I'm spending a, quite a bit of money on a very nice bottle of wine. What would I eat it with? Well, <laughs> it just it needs to be complemented with the food to go with it. So except no substitutes, but uh, I like a buttered lobster. Buttered yeah, lobster. Just picture this, so lobster tail. decadent. Oh, I wow. know, but the wine's so good. <laughs> Making so, me hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very simply, just some, uh, some lobster tail, just mm. some butter some roasted garlic, serve that up. Everyone will think you're a star chef, and it goes so well with this. You All can right, really smell it on the nose. All the taste is in the smell. Yeah, well, because you get the oak influence on this particular wine, you get a lot of the vanilla and the butter coming through anyway. Okay. Have a go. Now, why do you make that sound? <laughs> <laughs> 
It, don't worry. Do I have to do it as well? <laughs> what I'm doing, I'm sucking air across my palate. Oh, it makes a difference. It wow. does, doesn't it? Did the flavour just jump up? Yes, it did. Yeah, because what you're doing, you're actually tasting with your nose. Mm. Your palate has very, very little ability to taste at all. It gets sweet, salty, sour and bitter. But all the flavours actually come through our nose. So by sucking air across it, we get a lot more intensity. Learn something new every day. So, David, if you would like to try, you know, if someone would like to buy these wines, there's a discovery case, right? Yeah, the discovery case was put together because we understand a lot of consumers might not know about the sub-regions. So the discovery case allows you to go in, buy each of the regions, compare them side by side, okay. and then let your palate decide which one you like. Okay, well, fantastic. If you would like to buy a discovery case, click on the bottom right of the screen. If you'd like to buy any other wine, click on the top right of the screen. And if you'd like to sign up for a wine tasting course, click on the top left of the screen. I'm Alison Victor for Foodie TV.